Hello, it's me again. Today I'm bringing you another weird nugget of tabletop gaming lore that you probably never asked for. Kind of like how a cat brings you a dead bird and drops it on your pillow at 3am to show that they love you. In this video we're going to be talking about a game called Tactical Waifu. What is it? Why is it? What are the whispers that come from my closet when I sleep? And who invented it? Well, I can certainly answer some of those questions for you. Also, at the end of this video I'm going to be issuing a special challenge for every viewer, so stick around for that. Heh <laughs> that's right, bait their attention. Wait, wait, no, don't just skip to the end of the video. Watch the whole thing for- So what is Tactical Waifu? Well, it's this. A one-page RPG decked out in various shades of pink that I found floating around the internet a few years back on a site called 1D4chan. Uh, don't ask. It's an extremely simple game, basically created to parody absurd, pulpy anime tropes and let players have a bit of a laugh by role-playing as high school girls bearing deadly weapons of war. That's the whole explanation. It's very much what it says on the tin, which is good because I hate explaining things. Now this game was made by a creator called Erica Chappelle, and I was kind of surprised to find that she still has a very active social media presence and has published a bunch of other really cool things since Tactical Waifu. We'll come back to her other work because it's cool and deserves a mention. But back to Tactical Waifu first. Why don't we take a deeper look at the rules of this game? Don't worry, this won't take long. As with most role-playing games, you have several players and one Game Master, or GM. The GM is in charge of the game and sets up the world, and the players act on the story prompts given to them by the GM. Pretty standard stuff. On to character creation now. Your character has one stat, their number, which can be anywhere from two all the way up to five. A higher number means you're better at tactical stuff, and a lower number means you're better at waifu stuff. It kind of puts you on this sliding scale of tactical to waifu. The more mathematically inclined among you may have noticed that this game has a grand total of four possible character builds. Two, three, four, and five. When you attempt anything risky or any kind of a challenge, you'll roll some d6s. Normally you just roll one die, but you roll a second if you're prepared for whatever you're attempting, and a third if you're an expert at it. If the task at hand is a tactical task, each roll less than your number counts as a success. And if the task is a waifu task, then each roll above your number counts as a success. The more successes you get, the better the outcome is, and you can also get special bonus insights from rolling exactly your number. And those are the rules. I mean, there's also a table for randomly generating adventures, but that's all flavour. As far as the crunch goes, that's really it. I told you it wouldn't take long. Now on this channel we really seek to innovate and to push the boundaries of the medium. I figure that I can really save everyone's time by lying to my audience and apologising in the same video. And who says YouTube content has stagnated? So yeah, here's my confession. Tactical Waifu is not the progenitor of this particular rule set. It's actually a hack of a previous TTRPG called Lasers and Feelings, created by John Harper. In case you haven't realised from the everything about its design, Lasers and Feelings is based on Star Trek. The rules are pretty much the same. In fact, they're exactly the same. The only difference is that they're flavoured to play on the tropes of 20th century space operas instead of the tropes of ridiculous anime. Instead of your number measuring your position on the tactical to waifu scale, it measures your position along the lasers to feelings scale. You might be noticing a pattern. Right about now, you may be wondering why I started this video by talking about tactical waifu when lasers and feelings was the original. Well, it may surprise you to learn that I have four very rational reasons for formatting my video this way. Firstly, I get to bait weebs into clicking on my video. Secondly, it gives me the excuse to draw my avatar in an anime uniform while holding a gun and slap that up on the thumbnail. Okay, maybe rational was a stretch. I have four reasons for formatting the video this way. Thirdly, Tactical Waifu was the one I personally discovered first before learning that it spawned from lasers and feelings. Starting with Tactical Waifu allows the video to reflect my personal journey down this weird rabbit hole and maintain this stream of consciousness style that I seem to have adopted for some reason. And fourthly, because I like the other work that Erica Chappelle has done and I wanted to dedicate a bit of time to draw attention to her as a creator. That's right, it's time for the payoff to the thing that I said I was going to do earlier and the uh, segue into the next part. Yeah. So yeah, Erica Chappelle has published a bunch of really cool stuff since Tactical Waifu. Her biggest work is Flying Circus, which is an awesome looking TTRPG about a universe full of fantasy flying machines. There's a core cool rulebook, six expansion packs, and a novel set in the Flying Circus universe, and it's bloody excellent. As far as I can tell, she also does all the art herself, which just blows me away, because this stuff looks like it was made by a team of professionals. Definitely check out Flying Circus on itch.io and go swing by Erica's Twitter and Patreon too. I'll link them all in the description, because it's great stuff. 
And while I'm on the subject, go check out John Harper's work too. He's got a little studio, I guess, called 17 Design. It's got a bunch of great things there and loads of them are free. I'll link their itch page and Twitter in the description too. Both creators get their cup and a thumbs up, very good stuff award. Support small creators. I definitely don't have any personal stake in telling you this. Okay, let's get back on track talking about lasers and feelings. Now you could assume that this game is only really a joke. It's clearly trying to be funny, and it's so bare bones that it can't possibly be a strong, fulfilling RPG experience. Right? Yeah, so after thinking about it for a bit, I kind of realised that lasers and feelings, and by extension tactical waifu, kind of embody everything that I like about tabletop gaming. And I'm serious when I say that. It's true that the rules are very, very simple, but this is really a case of less is more. With only one game mechanic to learn, the emphasis is taken away from the rules and placed on the silly, light-hearted fun that the game is trying to create. Yes, it's true that your character only having one stat limits what you can do with them mechanically speaking, but in my mind it just encourages you to develop a personality, backstory and character quirks for them in order to set them apart. It's virtually impossible to power game too, because there are only four possible character builds and they're all fundamentally the same. Not to mention that it's completely free, a breeze to learn, and can be played in an evening, making it an excellent gateway for new players who are just getting into TTRPGs. Particularly in these days, when every game published by a major company seems to cost the GDP of Switzerland and all your major organs, a little bit of accessibility really goes a long way. But my favourite thing about Lasers and Feelings is the way that hacks and adaptations of the game are not only allowed, but actively encouraged by its creator. And bloody hell, this game has so many hacks. And it is amazing. I think Lasers and Feelings is best described as an affectionate parody. While it is poking fun at a genre, the intent isn't to criticise or take the piss. I see it much more as expressing your love for a genre wholesale, including its silliest aspects. And I think that, combined with its sheer simplicity, is what makes it so attractive to hack. You could make it anime or cyberpunk or high fantasy or sexy vampires or... whatever this one is. Just go onto Google or itch.io and type in lasers and feelings and there are just dozens. My personal favourites include Tactical Waifu, obviously, Gun Elf, Pangolin Prom, The Fight Before Christmas, Sexy Hairdresser Vampires, Kobolds in Trench Coats, and finally, Boy Problems, a Carly Rae Jepsen themed cyberpunk heist game. Honestly, I feel blessed to just exist in the same world as that game. Lasers and Feelings has propagated across an entire community through creativity and each person's passion for a genre that's special to them. You have rules being built on and changed and then picked up by the next person and built on some more. And I think that this culture of freely sharing ideas is fantastic, especially in a time where we're constantly obsessing over copyright and intellectual property and who's allowed to do what with which ideas. And don't get me wrong, those things are important too, especially for smaller and independent creators. But all I'm saying is that it's great to see actual, honest, healthy sharing. And hey, maybe we all stand to learn something from it. Now, I know the kind of person that watches my videos. You're probably something of a nerd, quite creative, interested in games, and looking for any excuse to procrastinate from your life's responsibilities. Which is why I'm setting every viewer of this video a challenge. The challenge is very simple. Make your own hack of lasers and feelings inspired by a genre that you like, and send it to me. You can send it by email, or you can join my Discord server and send it there. The link to my Discord server will be in the description. One month from now, on the 22nd of February, I'll publish a video showing off the lasers and feelings hacks I have been sent in by my audience. And also my own one. Yep, I'm taking part in the challenge too. Feel free to add any extra rules or supplementary business if you want. There are plenty of examples out there, and as I say, Google and itch.io are both great places just to look for inspiration. You don't even have to make it look extra glamorous. If all you have is Google Docs or hell, even a piece of paper and a pen, then go for it anyway. You're fully encouraged to be wacky and ridiculous because, well, there's a Carly Rae Jepsen cyberpunk heist one. At this point, anything goes. So yeah, that's it really. If you enjoyed, you can subscribe and like and all of that good stuff, and join my Discord if you want to hang out with some other nerds and chat and do shenanigans. I have a couple more videos in the works, so I might be uploading another one before February. We'll see. Until then, have a great time and happy holidays. See ya!